All right, what's going on guys? I uh, hope you guys can see me. I know there's a light in the background. It's probably gonna keep you from seeing my face. I got requested by one of you guys, and I'm sure a lot of people wanna know this, uh, how to build a base map with the ECU Master software. It's very, very simple. I'm gonna go over everything. Uh, this is just basically going to be the basic map to get you started and running. Obviously, gonna wanna do this wherever the car is gonna be at. Don't be swapping ECUs and trying to do this in a parking lot somewhere. It's just that's just a terrible idea. I'll go over everything that you need to know. Uh, this will go for the VVTI and the non-VVTI wasted spark setup and single fire coils. I will go over the firing order on some things and uh, basically everything else on the software will be for all the engines together so you guys can basically get the right idea. My numbers are not going to be the exact same as your numbers like the ignition tables and the fuel maps and stuff like that. Uh, the only things I will tell you that are going to be the same are going to be the things that I'll set up and I'll tell you whether or not you'll need them. And if you don't, then don't set them the same way. You're going to have to set settings the way that your car is set up and not the way my car is set up because everybody's car is different. It doesn't matter if everybody's car is set up the exact same. Everybody's car is different. Every engine is different. With that being said, let's jump right into this. I will put my face up in the corner, we'll do a face cam. Got my laptop here. Okay, so this here is actually my current map in my car right now. Uh, do not copy anything that you see here. This is not going to pertain to you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start out with a base map. Now this is a start map that you can actually get from the ECU Master Group. If you guys join that on Facebook or you go to their website, they do have base maps that you can get and that'll give you the basis of what you can like start with. That kind of helps you get to starting the vehicle. They're literally startup maps, so don't flash them and go try to drive it. You're gonna have to adjust things. Tuning is not a rocket science. It's actually very, very easy, but don't be going out and messing with stuff that you're not sure of and then blowing it up. Now we're gonna go through all these things here. So we got the sensor set up. Every engine is gonna have most of these things, the IAT, the coolant temps. One of the features that ECU Master has, uh, most ECUs should anyways, is the oxygen sensor. Now the best thing to do here is actually get a wide band sensor and get rid of the four wire narrow band sensor that is the basic O2 sensors in most vehicles. With the wide band sensor, you actually don't need a wide band gauge the ECU will read full air fuel ratio and you'll be able to have your ECU adjust things on its own and fix any problems that it might have in the future. I personally do not have auto tune set up because that is a feature on this. I tune it all myself. But if you were to have a wideband sensor, you're gonna go to the oxygen sensor and you're actually going to set wideband LSU. Now with the ECU Master Black, you can use the 4.9, which is uh, better. It actually reads the air fuel ratios a lot faster. It sends data a lot faster too. But with me, I have the classic and the 4.2 is actually what I have. You set the 4.2 and I left all this stuff alone. The reason I know that it works is because the numbers match the exact numbers on on my 4.9 on my AEM gate. A lot of these other things are going to be for if you were to put a fuel pressure sensor in and stuff like that. These are extra things that you don't exactly have to have to make it run. I don't have any of these other things. Uh, the map sensor is going to be the built-in sensor. You're going to want to use the built-in sensor on the ECU. There's no reason to be using an external sensor. The ECU, the stock one, is actually good for a boatload. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that on every single one of these, on every single one of these selections, there's actually a question mark that will actually tell you exactly Exactly what every single thing in this whole software does. So this here, if you, hey, if you were wondering what map does, it actually tells you what it does. Uh, before we get on here, gonna, we're gonna actually go up here. Uh, you go to tools and you can actually go to uh, configuration and you can actually set your uh, units if you want to. You can keep it metric or you can go imperial so it's a you know standard PSI and stuff like that. Uh, you don't want to mess with the engine start yet. We're actually going to go to fueling and uh, what you're gonna want to do is your injector size. You're gonna make sure that you get the closest setup. Now these are pre-settings and some of them are not gonna matter. Um, if you did have 1000 cc injectors, you'd obviously use ID2, ID1000s and uh, the stock injectors on the 1JZs are 370s. So you'd actually just uh, find the Nissan RB25 370s and they do work the same. But with me, I have 2150s, so we're going to pick the ID2000s. They basically have the same setup. So then after you do the injector wizard, you're going to go to general. Uh, you're going to set your engine size. Uh, if you're a 1JZ, obviously leave it 2500. Uh, I've got a 2JZ bottom end, so we're going to go to 3000. Uh, make sure you do not change this out of speed density. Speed density reads map versus RPM. Same here with the injector size. Make sure you set it the exact size that your injectors are. You will mess everything up if you do not set it right. Now these other things, you're not going to want to mess with them right now. Some of them are not needed. 
uh, you're gonna want to go to ignition coiled well wizard all right so if you're a wasted spark setup you will choose a double fire coil and that is because the coil will fire twice per revolution double fire coil you'll pick one you'll have three coils they'll double fire I am a single fire so I'm going and I have the AM smart coils so I'm actually going to pick the highest amp rated one primary trigger this is actually very important you're not going to want to go driving this around unless you have a timing light the timing light will actually you'll be able to set your uh, trigger angle and everything to the correct timing so it matches the timing map I do have a how to use a timing light way back in my channel if you guys look for it you can find it, it shows you how to do it but the idea is that if you have your timing map set up here and you are idling at a 13 and your timing light says that you're actually at 16 that's incorrect you want your timing light to read the exact same that this is so you would actually go back to your primary trigger and you would adjust the trigger angle down however many degrees it is until it gets to this number or up it just depends on what it is I mean you could be it could be saying you're at 12 and then you'd be at 8 you got to make sure they're the same because you can really mess things up if it's not so this is actually basically what it is for the Jay-Z's for the non BBTI GE's I'm not exactly sure because they don't have uh, crank sensors this is actually going to be for the you know the crank sensor guys cam sensor guys too you won't want to mess with the, anything else except for the ignition outputs uh, with this obviously if you are on a single fire setup you're going to want to set this up this way with me I actually wired them wrong so I actually have to change two of these around for the wasted spark setup generally you'll have a one two three one two three setup so you'll be one two three one two three and that is because they double fire you will not ever hit an event four four five or six okay so you're not gonna want to mess with anything else on this page here idle is kind of important but I don't have an idle air control valve so I actually set my idle with the throttle body manually but these things are normally going to be pretty straightforward these are outputs for anything that you have so a tachometer you can run the tachometer output that is on the ECU and it will actually display to your cluster which works really really good uh, same thing with the fuel pumps. Fuel pumps can be turned on with a ground signal from the ECU. Turns it on in the back. Now, all these things are pretty straightforward. That's pretty much what the outputs are for. Drive-by wire. I deleted it. I don't know why anybody would want to use it. I don't understand the issue. I, I've Ever since I've had it, I've always had problems with it whenever it was stock. So I just deleted that by using a non-VVTI throttle body. It's gone, done away with, full mechanical throttle body now, so you don't have to worry about that if you're not wanting to keep drive-by wire. Uh, VVTI, I have VVTI, so if you guys have VVTI, you can use your cam one control. You're going to be setting these up with the log. The log is saying that you're like negative 10 degrees, you're going to want to adjust this and uh, change it until it is actually correct degree, which will be on this map here. So if you're sitting here on zero and your log says you're at freaking 11, you're going to want to adjust your cam one control and you're going to want to change this number here up or down depending on what it is actually reading on the log you do not want them to be different flex fuel uh, for parameters flex fuel if you have a flex fuel sensor you can use your flex fuel and that is what these multiple maps are for you'll if you've noticed that in through the maps you'll see table one table two table two is for e85 or whatever high octane fuel you have table one is for pump gas so if you were to mix the fuels it would find a variable in between to give you a good map now i do not have flex fuel i run strictly e85 so i don't use that other this is uh the important one so it's important if you have E85, you're going to want to go to table switch and other. Uh, this will actually give you the opportunity to use table number two because table number two is for E85. So you want to click table switch mode and you'll go to flex fuel blend and it'll allow you to use tables number two. Now that everything is basically set up here, you'll want to go to your engine start and you'll go to cranking fuel number two. All of these maps will be number two if you did switch to flex fuel blend. If you're running pump gas, do not switch to flex fuel blend because it will not adjust table number one. It will only adjust table number two. So if you're running pump gas, leave it alone. Do not adjust that and then just go to table number one. I am showing you guys table number two because I am on E85, but basically this is going to work the same for you. Now that we are set up here, basically pretty much ready to go. Uh, right down here in the corner, you'll see a disconnected status. Um, you're going to want to plug this in if it's not already plugged in. Plugged into your ECU when you turn the key on. It should say connected. 
Alright, well, we've totally just had a mishap here, and I forgot that ECU Master likes to flash its own tune back onto the PC and completely erase whatever you got set up there, so I lost it all. It would have been time for you to start the vehicle. Uh, what you would want to do here is for engine start, you want to pull up your cranking fuel, whichever table you're going to use. Uh, for me, it would be cranking fuel number two, the table number two. Your coolant temps, you will actually see right here along the bottom of this bar here. Uh, you actually see this little red line, and that is actually your temp. And as you your car warms up or gets colder, the temp will actually move along this to tell you where it's actually at, so you can actually adjust these accordingly. Now, what you're going to do here is attempt to start the vehicle. If the vehicle does not start, it's either because it's too lean or too rich. And what you're going to want to do is wherever this little line is, you're going to want to adjust it uh, with the quick keys. You can use the minus or plus sign quick keys can, and uh, you can move it up and down. Uh, do not move it up and down a crazy amount because this actually does, there is a massive difference with each click for how much fuel and how much you're taking out. So you'll want to adjust it up and down a little bit at a time and then try again and again and again and eventually it will start. And once it starts, it might run and it might die. Once you're running, you're going to want to set your warm-up enrichment. Uh, this warm-up enrichment is actually for if uh, the car is too lean or too cold. You can increase the fuel and take out the fuel, and this goes across the entire fuel map and not just one area. Uh, you're not going to want to be crazy with this. Once the car is idling good and up to a certain temp, you're going to leave this alone, and you'll be out of here. You'll go to your VE tables, depending on which map it is, and you should be idling down here in these numbers. Down here is your map sensor. Uh, you will be based off of your barometric pressure. So whatever the pressure is in your area is actually what the ECU will read as a base. So don't misread that and think that you're actually running 14 pounds of boost when you're not, and that's actually the area pressure that you're breathing. So you will actually be idling around here. I apologize if this video is all over the place. I actually just spontaneously came out here to try to film this for you guys. I do hope that it is helping you. Uh, it is kind of confusing to try and tell you guys how it works because normally I just know what I'm doing and then I just come in here and adjust things and change things accordingly. It's hard to teach but it is actually literally as easy as I'm saying it is. It is just gonna take time for you guys playing with it in order to make it work. It's not going to just be an overnight thing where you walk out and you're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm good at this now. You're gonna wanna practice on it, but just don't be crazy with it. I did practice, I've never blown a car up. I've been doing this for like six or seven years now. So, obviously, it's proven. I mean, look at my car, I tuned it myself, street tuned. One more thing I wanna say, the ignition table, do not mess with it unless you know what you're doing. Now, that's basically all I got for you guys. That's just literally all I use in the ECU Master software. I don't use a lot of the other stuff. And if I do, it's because I'm just trying to uh, experiment with it and I don't have much experience with it. Uh, literally, where you're gonna get all your power from is your VE table and your ignition table. But the ignition table, you can adjust a little bit but you're gonna to wanna to read up on it if you don't know what it is. Do not go in and mess with that. I'm not gonna be held responsible for anything that you do to your engine. If you want it to live, leave the ignition table alone until you read about it and understand what it does and how to adjust it according to your RPM boost and fuel. One last thing I forgot to mention, this is your AFR Lambda table. This is actually the table that your ECU tries to match. So if you're idling here, your ECU is going to use the oxygen sensor or the wideband sensor and it's going to try as hard as it can to reach these numbers. Same if you're in boost, it's going to try as hard as it can to reach these numbers according to your VE table. It's not going to be perfect, but those are the numbers that you're going to want to match. Uh, obviously when you're idling, 14.7 is the perfect ratio for a pump gas. Uh, you can run 15.1, 15.2, uh, numbers like that with E85. E85 is a lean fuel, but it's very, very clean. Uh, it actually takes away so much possibility for detonation, so it's a lot safer to run. Uh, that's another reason why I don't want you guys to mess with your ignition table, especially if you're on pump gas, because you can really blow something up. Detonation is high risk with pump gas. So just don't mess with it. E85, you have a little bit of room to work with. You can play with it a little bit. 
but be cautious. You can hear detonation. I have a video of um, audible detonation if you guys go back and check it out. I can actually link it in the description here if you guys want to listen to it. Audible detonation. It sounds like a hose clamp being dragged on the concrete. But I think this is it, guys. Uh, I don't have much else to show you. Hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, I know it was kind of all over the place, but these tutorials are just kind of odd for me. I don't exactly know what I'm doing all the time, especially when it comes to uh, showing you guys on the software on the laptop. Uh, I got all the important parts covered in the beginning, so hopefully it helped you guys and you guys got your car started. If you have any questions, I can answer anything in the description. Sometimes direct questions are a lot easier for me to help with. Um, and I will get back to everybody's comment. I always do. Everybody's comment has a reply. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll get back to you. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. We're 20 subs away. Let's get to it. Probably going to be at 1,000 by the time this video is uploaded. But, you know. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.